Hello friends! Ever since update 1.6 in Stardew Valley, moss has been a key ingredient in a bunch of crafted items, ranging from speed grow to treasure totems and bluegrass starters, or even the notorious mushroom log. But how do you get enough moss to make all those great items and can you farm moss? I've asked my team of scientists for some help with the numbers and in this video we'll be taking a deep dive into moss growth. I hope you like graphs. If you find this interesting, please like and subscribe for more videos like this and let me know if there are other topics like this you'd like to see as well. Oh, and if you like hearing from the scientists, make sure to send some love for them in the comments too. With that said, let's get into it. When starting new playthroughs in update 1.6, I noticed there really wasn't much moss to be found until the first green rain event, where I would try to stock up for the whole year. Before that, there may have been a few trees that started growing moss in late spring and early summer, but it didn't seem to be tied to a particular date or event, so I wondered, what gives? As it turns out, it actually all comes down to tree growth stages. You may be familiar with the first five stages of tree growth. You start with a seed, which is referred to as stage one, and that progresses through various forms of sapling in stages two through four before becoming a mature tree at stage five. It actually spends two growth cycles at stage four, so for mathematical simplicity, I'm going to drop the stages before the second day of stage four down by one. This would put a freshly planted seed at stage zero. Just go with me on this one. Anyway, for your basic trees like oak, maple, pine, and green rain trees, there is a 20% chance each day to progress to the next stage. For those, Tree fertilizer is supposed to raise that chance to 100% through maturity, so it's a really good way to speed up the process. There are some really important notes on fertilizer, so more on that in a little bit. Okay, so where does the moss come in? Well, with update 1.6, tree growth stages continue up to stage 15. You won't be able to see any physical changes in the trees, but at stage 14 and 15, trees gain the ability to produce moss. This chance varies by season and weather, which is summarized in this table. Rainy days are best in any season and sunny days in summer are the worst, other than winter, in which case you won't be getting any moss from outdoor trees in the valley. But wait, it gets worse. Whenever moss is harvested, the tree's growth stage drops back down to 12 minus the number of moss harvested, meaning your tree will have to grow three or four stages again just to have the chance to make more moss. Type 1 and Type 2 green rain trees will grow moss faster, and on top of that, if your other trees are within a 5x5 five five square of one of those green rain trees, they will actually get a boost to growth stage and moss growth chances. This all seems a little complicated, so let's see if we can try to clear it up with some graphs. The scientists were kind enough to run Monte Carlo simulations to generate probability distributions for the growth stage of a sample of 5,000 trees for various growth timeframes. Let's start with the case of growing trees from seeds, assuming standard sunny weather in fall or spring. We'll also assume we harvest any available moss daily. As you can see on day zero, all of our trees are stage zero. After 10 days, a lot of our tree saplings are around stage two, and after about 23 days, half of our trees have reached maturity. If we jump out to day 50, the tail of our distribution is in mossy territory and about 8% of our trees are capable of producing moss at this point. If we go all the way out to day 90 and 100, we can see their distributions look nearly identical, meaning we reached a steady state where trees are gaining moss growth capabilities at the same rate as we harvest them, which drops them back down to the lower growth stages. If we factor in the growth bonus from nearby green rain trees, we hit steady state a bit earlier at roughly 70 days. Even at 70 days, that still seems like a really long time to get up to full moss production. This also explains why we don't see much moss in the first spring, so how do we speed things up? The real trick in the beginning may be being careful to preserve your oldest trees at first. On day one of a new playthrough, all of the mature trees around Stardew Valley should start out at stage five. Early on, these will be the fastest to reach a stage required to generate moss, so you may not want to clear cut and replant all of the trees on your farm in the beginning. Even doing this, it will take a while to get a lot of moss flowing. One option, and maybe your only option in a new playthrough, is to wait for green rain. During the green rain event, immature tree saplings and seeds have a much higher chance for multiple stages of growth and every tree capable of growing moss will do so regardless of the growth stage. 
So let's say you want to get moss as quickly as possible in a new playthrough. How much can you realistically get before the first green rain? Since green rain is random, let's just say, how much can you get by the middle of summer? In a new game, we start out with a lot of mature trees on our farm and in cinder sap forest, so you have a pretty good start. We'll assume all of those mature trees start at stage five for a fresh save file. If we look at the probability distributions, we can see that after about 20 days or roughly three weeks into spring, we might start seeing some moss pop up with about one to 2% of trees being capable of generating moss. At the 42 day mark or about the middle of summer, we'll be at about 69% of our typical full production for spring and fall. Nice. If we integrate our moss generation through the middle of summer, we'll get a range of roughly 18 moss per 100 trees, assuming only sunny summer days, to 57 moss per 100 trees if we get all rainy days. Those numbers really aren't too impressive, considering the green rain event can get you around 300 moss in one day. Maybe it's better to think about things in the long run. There are too many variables to consider all of the possibilities with weather, season, and green rain tree proximity, so for the long-term calculations, we'll just assume standard sunny days in spring or fall. At steady state, about 38% of our trees are capable of generating moss, and only about 10% of those will actually produce moss. So per 100 trees, we're only getting 5.7 moss per day if we average 1.5 moss per harvest. If we incorporate the boost from green rain tree proximity, that bumps us up to about 8.5 moss per 100 trees per day. Excluding winter, we would expect something like 480 to 710 moss per 100 trees per year. The quarry can easily accommodate over 100 trees and the train station can fit over 150 trees. So either location could make a great long-term moss farming area if you don't already have plans for them. 100 trees can fit in a 19 by 19 square or about 361 tiles, so depending on which farm map you're on, you may have space right on the farm as well. Another option is the desert, where I crammed well over 200 trees in my test without any planning in advance. I'm still not sure if the season always counts as summer for the purpose of moss growth, but going down to a 3.3% chance of moss growth from 10% might not actually hurt you as much as you may think, especially if you use green rain trees to speed things up. The tree stage growth chance won't be hindered by sunny summer weather, and that's actually the bigger factor for getting trees moss ready. Assuming sunny summer weather, you get fewer trees growing moss per day, but the growth stages continue to increase normally. This means you get a very different looking distribution with a much higher fraction of trees that are ready for moss to grow. So even though the moss growth chance is much lower, the fraction of trees that are moss ready is much higher. The base moss production in the desert is about 56% of sunny spring growth, while with green rain trees, that jumps up to about 80%. If you factor in the 33% increase from having an extra season of winter moss growth in the desert, it's starting to look pretty good. Then, the only downside is having to buy a ticket to the desert if you can't take an obelisk or warp totem. This is all for the baseline case, so after going through all of that, it's time to throw a wrench in all of it. I mentioned fertilizer earlier, but we should really dive deeper into that because there's more than meets the eye. Fertilizer quickly gets a common seed or sapling up to maturity, increasing the chance of a growth stage increase from 20% up to 100%. You can't fertilize a mature tree, so this growth increase doesn't affect adult trees, right? Well, actually, the game code would suggest that this effect persists for the life of the tree, and you can even see that mature trees maintain the fertilized status in the save file. I'm not sure if this is working as intended or if it's more of a bug, but if the effects of fertilizer continue to guarantee growth stage increases every day for mature trees, this should lead to a significant increase in moss production. If we re-simulate our growth stage distribution with fertilizer, you can see that the steady state distribution shifts to the majority of trees quickly returning to stage 15 after producing moss. This will lead to an increase in moss-capable trees from about 38% with unfertilized trees, all the way up to about 81% with all fertilized trees. Doubling the output is gonna be huge if you're trying to farm it up as a crafting material. 
Not only that, but we reach steady state moss production in under 20 days versus the nearly full year required for unfertilized trees. Of course, after discovering this, I wanted to test it out and make sure all of this was consistent with the in-game experience. So we set up an experiment comparing 20 fertilized and unfertilized trees. After allowing both sets to grow for about a year, we began collecting moss from them each day to measure moss output rates. Cumulative moss collection seemed pretty similar at first, but after collecting for a season, the fertilized trees showed a clear trend toward increased production. According to the data, unfertilized trees converged around 0.046 moss harvests per tree per day, while fertilized trees converged around 0.085 moss harvests per tree per day. These are both a little higher than the simulation predicted, but the in-game test had some rainy days, which likely account for the difference. All right, with all that said, what are the main takeaways? If you're trying to get moss early, try to keep as many original mature trees around the farm from day one as possible, and don't expect too much before the first green rain. If you wanna start a moss farm, tree fertilizer is huge. It can save you three seasons of tree growth getting to full production and results in significant increase to moss production rate at steady state. As soon as you unlock the crafting recipe for fertilizer, it's probably a good idea to start replacing unfertilized trees in your moss farming areas. Green rain trees can be your friend, but your mileage may vary. You'll want to space them to be within a five by five grid of normal trees. Something like this should work. Just make sure it's green rain types one or two. The fiddlehead trees won't help you with moss. So if you plant a mossy seed and it looks green, pick it back up and replant it. With this setup, one in nine trees will have to be green rain trees. Since they must be covered in moss to boost surrounding trees, you may need to decide whether leaving them unharvested is a good idea. They could be more valuable in situations where you don't harvest moss every day. This will increase their moss covered uptime, which will keep up the boost to nearby trees. Based on the simulations, their biggest impact is going to be in desert moss farms, assuming the weather counts as sunny summer. There, the harvest frequency is probably lower and the moss growth benefits should be relatively larger too. A well set up moss farm can provide a slow but steady supply of moss that can really add up. Just be prepared for a little waiting as your trees get established. Moss probably isn't like a traditional crop where you'll want to farm it to sell for big piles of cash, but it can be really useful for crafting, especially if you want to set up one of the best money makers there is, mushroom logs. Other than being slow, it's pretty easy to get going, and in the worst case, you can always scrap it for a bunch of wood later. So what do you guys think? Is moss farming worth it? And have any of you set up trees specifically for moss? Let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed or if you have any other good moss farming tips. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, please give it a like and subscribe, or at the very least, send some love to the scientists. Oh, and I'd love for you to come say hello on Twitch. Until next time, goodbye.